If you haven't heard of NAN, where have you been? Where, what? NAN is an automation platform that allows you to create endless amounts of automations to make your life easier, whether if you want to notify yourself if a server's down, automatically process like user forms or submissions. You want to scrape websites or create your own AI chatbot that can interact with your home lab. Whatever it may be, NAN is a way to do it. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is installing and setting up NAN on our home lab. Of course, these installation steps will work if you're doing this on a VPS or some other platform. We're going to be doing this both with Docker and Proxmox. So there will be timestamps. And in addition, we're going to show you how to securely connect to your NAN instance, whether if it's in your home lab or offsite somewhere using NetBird. And then I'll show you how to actually use NetBird to establish a peer-to-peer -peer WireGuard connection between your instance that's running NAN and an off-site instance. So those can be peer-to-peer -peer connected so you can run automations that way. For this one, we'll create a simple automation asking if a server is online with internal NetBird IP addresses and getting a Telegram notification. Now, the most common way to install this is going to be with Docker. Whether that just be a Docker run command or Docker compose. Real quick, I'm going to show you kind of a non-production setup for Docker compose. This setup isn't intended to be accessible from the open internet, but since we're going to be using NetBird to connect to it, it we're going to be fine. Of course, installing Docker itself is a prerequisite. I already have it on this machine, but it's really easy to get the git docker sh script. So you just download it with this command right here, and then you would run sudo sh git docker, and then we'll install all the packages that you need. Lastly, it's recommended to add your user to the Docker group. If I do ID here, you could see I am part of that group. And to add your group, you would just do user mod AG Docker and then your user, just like this. And then to apply it, you do new GRP Docker, just like that. Now for this setup, I do have a NAN folder that I created so I can change directories into that folder. And here I have a compose YAML file. I'll have all this linked down below. If I nano into this compose file, it's just a pretty simple setup without domains or anything like that. What you could see, those are commented out right here. While this is a simple deployment, I do recommend you check out their official documentation for Docker. You could see starting N8N right here, all their recommended settings and what everything means. If you want to switch the databases, you can as well. Uses SQLite by default if you don't manually set up a database such as Postgres. Additionally, if you go to server setups, you can see more information on getting a production ready environment. So if I go down here to Docker Compose, it is going to be a much more detailed and complex version of the Compose file that we are going to be running today. But with that said, with this Compose file, we have our time zones, we have some permission settings, we have basic authorization active, and secure cookie is set to false because we're not really going to need to be setting up um, an SSL certificate because we're going to be accessing this with peer-to-peer -peer WireGuard and not exposing it again to the open internet. We're creating a volume for the data and then we have access to local files which if I exit out here is going to be in the same folder. So once you have that and you have it saved, we could spin it up with a simple Docker compose up. I'm not going to detach it as of yet so I can make sure there's no errors when I actually deploy the thing. So it's going to pull and extract all of our images here. And then once it's all done, we could see everything spin up. Here we have some information about our database. So I do recommend you go ahead and read that. But for now, I'm going to hit control C to stop this. And then I'm going to run this with dash D so then we can use our terminal and now it's going to be running in the background. Also, if I LS, you'll see that local file is right there. So that is where those files are going to be stored. And now that it's running, we can see the IP of the server is 102 or ending in 102. So if I test it out by going to this address with this port, we can see that we have the setup owner account. I'd go ahead, fill out all this information, click next. Here I go ahead and just hit get started. We can skip this for now. And just like that, we have NAN installed locally. Now that's one way to install it. I personally installed it through a Proxmox helper script. If you watched our video on how to set up Proxmox, this is something that is incredibly easy to do. If we go to this page right here, VE helper scripts, hit view scripts, we could just search for N8N. You can see it right there as an LXC container. And then all we would do is copy this command right here, head over to our instance of Proxmox, head over to our instance of Proxmox, go to our node that we want to install this on, jump into the shell, and then paste that single line command there. 
hit enter, and then it will begin the setup script for NAN. So here we can hit yes to send diagnostics. You go with the default settings if you want to, or you can go to advanced settings if you want to pick and choose some things. So for this, we'll go probably mostly with the default unprivileged, set ourselves up a root password, container ID, I'm gonna do 999 for now, host name NAN. We're gonna do 32 gigs of RAM because 10 gigs is a little light, two cores, two gigs of RAM, the bridge is fine. And basically the rest of this stuff, we're just gonna go all default settings. Obviously, if you have a reason to change something, you can go ahead and do that. So let's hit yes to create the LXC. And no, we're not gonna write this to a configuration file. So now it's gonna go ahead and create. So there, just like that, we can see it is being created. And usually these LXC containers or the Proxmox helper scripts are doing the kind of manual installation process for us. So it's not gonna be running with Docker. And if we head over to the docs, you can see right here, the first installation option is NPM, which if you do want to install it manually on your own machine, this is kind of the recommended steps that you're gonna to want to do. And if I head back over here, and there we go, it's all successful. We can see it did set it up with Node.js. And if I just go ahead and give this line a copy here, drop it into our address bar, we now have the same kind of setup prompt that we had when we installed it with Docker. Now that was just a demo. I actually have my very own instance of NAN running. So I'm gonna get rid of my two test environments and finish the rest of this video in the instance I actually use. And this instance is on the IP address ending in 105. So if I go to this, you can see my actual instance here. I only have one thing up and running, which is a little, uh, update script, which is very nice. I still am working on it right around here. It kind of fails out. It's just a view output issue. Unrelated, I will fix that. But what I want to do is connect to this remotely. Now, I already have an instance of NetBird set up in a different LXC, so I technically, using the Networks feature, can access this right now. But what I'm going to do real quick is just show you how I install NetBird directly on this machine. Because later on, when we set up some automations, we're going to want to use direct peer-to-peer -peer connections between this LXC container and other maybe off-site resources. So maybe potentially confidential or sensitive data is being sent over that encrypted tunnel. Now, this step is going to be a Proxmox specific step, and that is accessing or opening it so this LXC container can access the uh, network or the tunnel device. So I'm going to shut down this container real quick and then head over to my main node. And here we're gonna go into the configuration directory for the LXC containers, which the steps for this can be found in our Proxmox VE for beginners guide. We're just gonna scroll on down until the point where we are at the LXC for NetBird. And this right here is the directory that we are going to want. So drop that in. Our container ID is 105. So it's 105.conf. And then if we scroll down here, what we could do is go back over and grab these lines, give that a copy, and this is gonna add an LXC entry point for DevNet and DevNet ton. So head back over here, drop that on in, save that, close it out. And now when we fire up our N8N LXC here, start her up, we should be able to see if I LS into DevNet, we can see the ton device right there. Perfect. Now, if I head over to our NetBird dashboard, we're gonna go just straight to setup keys and I am gonna create a new setup key. This is gonna be our N8N LXC. Naming here doesn't really matter, but we're gonna add this to the group. This is my home lab and this is a LXC. So for these, just set up the groups however you prefer for whatever your use cases are, but this is how I have mine set up. So we're gonna create this setup key. There it is. If I just click install NetBird under Linux, we'll have the commands right here for us. So give this a copy, drop her on in, hit enter, and it's gonna do everything that it needs to do automatically. While it does that, we can grab the run NetBird with our setup key already in the command, give that a copy. We could see the installation was successful. So we go to paste that on in, hit enter, and we should get a connection successful, which you can see right there. Now, if I head back over here and we go to my peers, we could see we have n8n.hopkey.cloud because I set up custom DNS. And I can actually just verify that this is working real quick on my phone here. I'm gonna disable my Wi-Fi so it's using a network that isn't my local network here. Open up the NetBird app and we are connected. So now if I go directly to n8n.cloud with the proper port, just like that, we're connected 
peer-to-peer -peer directly to my NAN instance from an off-site network. And that brings up an important use case, something I mentioned a little bit earlier. What if I want to establish a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection between two machines, one of them being our local NAN instance and maybe another being an offsite VPS. How do I connect those two and run automations between them? And with Netbird, that is incredibly simple. You can see if I go over to my dashboard, I already have a VPS right here running on Vulture, all set up, ready to go. Did the same exact setup process that we did through the Linux terminal with the setup key. Now to connect these two machines, all I need to do is create an access policy. This is a test machine for an LLM mesh, video on that coming soon. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually set it up so these are a part of some custom groups. So this NAN machine I'm going to put into a NAN group, just like that, save the group, and then the offsite VPS which is right here, I'm gonna to add to the group of off-site. So now if I save that group, I go under access control and policies, I can create a new policy in which my NAN instance that's running locally can have access to the destination group of off-site. And we can further customize and control this. For example, if we wanted only a one-way connection, we could customize the policy. So if we only wanted this to access maybe SSH, maybe a web portal, we could do that as well. But for this, I am just gonna have this set to all access both ways. So from there, we could continue. We can enable posture checks if you'd like to. I'm gonna continue. And this is gonna be my NADN off-site automations. So from there, we can add that policy. And now if I go ahead and grab the IP address for my offsite machine, which is this Vulture instance right here, Vulture Hopkey Cloud, copy that, head over here to the terminal for NAN and just do a real quick ping test to make sure that we do have connection. So if I paste that in, you can see we have connection directly to that instance using the Netbird DNS name, Netbird IP address. This is a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection. So you get control C to end that. And now just as a real quick, easy example, I can create a new workflow and run a quick automation to send me a notification if this goes offline. So what I could do, for example, is add a schedule trigger. So we drop that in and maybe I want this to check every minute. So minutes one, close this out. And now here, what we're going to do is add a simple command execution. So execute command, and we are gonna execute a ping test. Uh, we're gonna send one packet and we're gonna give it three seconds to do it. So if I execute this step, for example, we can see that we received the one packet, everything's working fine, but if I for example, I am to disable this policy, which now the connection shouldn't work. Uh, I'm to execute this step. We could see we have a command failed. Something went wrong. The key is not required or not available. And with this, what I could do is uh, just for example, if I execute this, it's just going to stop right here. But if I go into the settings for the execute command, we can change the on error right now. By default, it's set to on workflow. But what we could do is go to continue using the error output. So now if I execute this, we could see we have the error right there. And if I'm to enable this and then execute this, we now have a success. So it's looking good. Now on a success, just to make this pretty, what we could do is um, do nothing because it's a success. We don't need to worry about it. And then on a failure, you could set up whatever you wanted. But for me, I want to be notified that something's up. So what I would do in my use case is I would add a telegram and we would send, send a text message for the text. I could do something like warning VPS offline, offline from Netbird network, something like that. And I already have my Telegram account in here. It's really easy to go ahead and set that up. Essentially for Telegram, all you do is contact the bot father. Go ahead and create your bot, give it a name, username, and then from there you'll get an API key in which you can use to go ahead and add it as an account in NAN. And then you're gonna to want to get a chat ID, which you could get that by going to this address right here with your API key added to it, checking out the JSON, and then finding your chat ID through there. 
I grabbed my chat ID from a uh, different automation I have. So now if I go ahead and back out of here, we're gonna save this. And now if I execute the workflow, you could see success does nothing. But if I theoretically disabled this connection, or if the server went offline, we executed this workflow, I should be getting a Telegram message, which I did right there, giving me the warning that it is offline, and this will automatically run every minute, so I will get spammed to go ahead and get try to get my attention to fix the issue. And that's just one way to go ahead and use Netbird for secure peer-to-peer -peer connections between local resources, offsite resources. You could connect offsite resources together, whatever you need to do, use it to connect to local instances, non it, the use cases truly stop where your imagination stops. So again, if you are looking for more content like this, do subscribe to this channel as we will be coming out with a lot more fun stuff, including a video going over a bunch of different NAN automations that may be helpful to you. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.